Hi, I'm Dr. Manish Jain for Cancer Talks. Today we are going to discuss about tongue cancer. Now, Now, oral cancer or what we call the malignancies of head and neck in that the most important is oral cancer which is a very common cancer worldwide. We are almost having 40% of these cancers. means if you look at 100 cancers in india 40% may be head and neck cancers the ratio is male to women men to women is like 3 as to 1 and the approximate age is 55 60 most of the places depending upon the areas carcinoma tongue what we call the tongue cancer now tongue has two parts the anterior part which we see protruding out and the part which is fixed which is in our throat in pharynx called the posterior part or base of tongue these are uh, the two areas so two third and one third and if you look at the breakup of cancer lateral tongue comprises of maximum cancer so 47% of cancers come from lateral tongue the posterior tongue comprises of 20% and the tip comprises of 15% plus there are some uh, in the frenulum in the side so there can be other areas of cancer now why it is important to know the tongue cancer because tongue cancer in anterior and posterior is treated differently so oral cavity cancers and the oropharyngeal cancers these are little different so when we talk of tongue cancer we generally talk of the anterior part of tongue what happens is when a person puts his gutka or tobacco and or khaini he is holding it there they get this cancers in a very typical place where they are holding this which is called an indian oral cancer and most of the cancers are located in this place now if you look at causes tobacco is the most important cause 90% of the cancers have tobacco usage and it is basically very clear that more the use the higher is the chance and if you stop tobacco it takes 20 years for you to normalize your risk so though it is a preventable disease uh, we are creating this why because when we repeatedly expose our body to tobacco we are exposing it to a lot of carcinogens a smoke can have 57 carcinogens a oral tobacco has 4000 chemicals and with almost 50 carcinogens in that which is leading to this cancer promotion it irritates the mucosa the mucosa undergoes morphologic change the mucosa then transforms and starts multiplying into bad cells and then continues to grow which becomes a cancer so if there is an early change and you stop tobacco you may reverse cancer so the exposure is ex- uh, removed the cancer process halts the body may reverse your cancer so now if you are smoking you can get a cancer because of that if you are drinking alcohol on a regular basis and you are taking tobacco then you are increasing your ch- chances of cancer 75 to 80% of patients who come to us with oral cancers have an exposure to alcohol now alcohol is directly acting as an irritant also causing nutritional deficiency so together it multiplies the risk of cancer in several folds the other risk factor for an oropharyngeal malignancy or the posterior part of tongue is hpv now hpv 16 is the subtype which irritates the dna so this is called a clastogenic dna damaging virus which leads to irritation and cancer so not that everybody who is exposed to hpv gets a cancer and there are some other things like poor oral hygiene so if you have bad dentures if you have an oral sepsis if you have syphilis now we don't see this disease so commonly but syphilis was one of them plummer vinson syndrome like you know if you have an iron deficiency there can be a wave formed in your throat and which can lead to an irritation so this syndrome is called plummer vinson which also can lead to cancer if you have vitamin a deficiency if you have certain uh, genetic disorders young people if they get cancer 
then it is more likely to be a viral related cancer and there are two types of viruses the ebv virus and the hpv virus now how do we see these patients we generally would see these patients when they have a ear pain or a difficulty in swallowing or a bleeding from the mouth or difficulty in uh, uh, there may be an ulcer in their mouth they may have restriction in their tongue movement they may have difficulty in pronouncing certain things so they may what we call tongue tie so they may not be able to speak like a normal person so they find as if they are speaking with a hot potato or hot tomato in their mouth you will also find that these patients because their tongue is having trouble they may be sitting with a handkerchief on their mouth they may be salivating which may be just drooling out of their mouth they may not be able to swallow it they may have a severe earache and they may go to an ent for that they may find that there are uh, mouth opening is difficult so they may have trismus they may have other problems like uh, they may not be able to take any spices they may avoid all the spices and chilies and other stuffs like that so they may be going for a very bland diet so these are certain features you may be uh, getting alerted with that there is some problem with this person's tongue now we generally would also say that there are certain pre malignant conditions which are very important to our country because they can go into cancer and generally this happens at age of 30 to 50 so you have pre malignant conditions in 30 to 50 and you get cancers after 50 so you have 20 years to block a cancer now how do you diagnose this if you have a white patch in your mucosa which is like well circumscribed or shining and uh, otherwise uh, you go to a surgeon or physician and he tells you that it is a white plaque leukoplakia which can be biopsied and confirmed but this can be a leukoplakia very easy to diagnose a surgeon or an oncologist can easily diagnose 2.4% of these people will develop cancer in 10 years 4% will develop in 20 years so not that everybody goes into cancer with leukoplakia but it can be easily treated you can do a, a removal of that plaque and then it is cured and you can avoid the irritation which is going to create that so like tobacco you avoid and you may not get it again in life erythroplakia is similar it is a red plaque but it has 17 times Uh, higher incidence compared to leukoplakia so it's more common but more difficult to diagnose because it's a red patch needs a, a surgeon or an oncologist or a specialist to look into it and this can be very easily cured by removing it so you remove it and the cancer is cured means you don't allow it to go into cancer so there is no cancer so you are treating a pre malignant condition and avoiding cancer so cancer can be prevented that is what i'm trying to tell you what are the diagnosis methods like we have uh, an clinical examination we look into the mouth we look into the neck we look at the nodes we take a biopsy from that uh, area which is an suspected area or we do an fnc from the neck nodes to see whether they are involved we do an opg to look at the dentures we look and do a ct scan we may do an mri especially for a tongue we may require an mri because the soft tissue is better evaluated by an mri which will tell me whether the tongue has been means the lesion has crossed the midline or not sometimes for the posterior part of tongue like uh, oropharyngeal malignancies we require a laryngoscopy or pan endoscopy or a nasal scopy we also require a dental examination to make sure that the dentures are in right place and once we have done the diagnosis we go for staging so we have stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 so early stage like stage 1 stage 2 can be operated and once you do surgery if they have node negative and if they don't have bad feature sometimes they may not require anything beyond surgery but some patients who have high risk feature may require radiation or even uh sometimes if the margins are positive they may require a resurgery if the patient has a t3 t4 cancer and surgery is done then they will definitely require radiation plus minus chemotherapy 
and if they have a node positive disease which is like n2 n3 then they may require chemo radiation and surgery sometimes may not be a good option in this kind of patients so what we look at is whether the cancer is less than 4 cm more than 4 cm in the anterior part of tongue posterior part of tongue anterior part of tongue can be operated by most of the people posterior part of tongue or oropharyngeal malignancies require a robotic surgery and lot of centers may not have the robotic facility for this posterior part of tongue and the most important part as i said after a tongue cancer treatment what we need to do for them is to make sure that they get their speech back and they are able to swallow their food these are two important things so we definitely at our center help them to do these two things and get them back to normal thank you